This is Disney Travel Tales, a trip report show helping you to become an expert at navigating your next Disney vacation. Join me every Friday for all things Disney related. Not traveling to Disney anytime soon? Never fear, we are still the show for you. Sit back, relax, and immerse yourself in someone else's trip. All the joy, none of the stress. All right, if you're ready, let's get to today's show. Hello and welcome. You are listening to my very first bonus episode and I'm so excited to be here today to talk about one of my favorite things ever, which is booking your next Disney vacation. I'm Jenny and I'm here to talk with you all about getting this next vacation booked. We're going to talk about the ins and outs, why you should book as early as you can, and just kind of what the benefits are to that. A lot of people don't realize that booking early is really the best way to book your next Disney vacation. Uh, I get a lot of clients who are really looking at those last minute vacations and that's just not the way to go. And this is what this episode is all about. I'm going to tell you why. So Disney opened today, February 27th, bookings for 2025 Walt Disney World vacations. I just want to say that this completely caught all travel agents across the U.S., off guard. Usually Disney will open these vacation packages at the beginning of June, sometimes late May. And so to just out of the blue, we were just warned yesterday that they were going to open today. I think it's so exciting. And this is really going to be so great for you, the visitor. Um, This is going to help you. And again, we're going to go over all of this information. So if you're thinking about visiting Disney in 2025, you're not going to want to miss this episode. Starting at the very beginning with just some of the basics. Right now, you can book Disney, Walt Disney World in Florida only for 2025 for the dates of January through October. Also, the only resorts that are available right now that are all available for all of those dates would be Value, Moderate, and Deluxe. If you're looking to book in January of 2025, there are some deluxe villa options, but those will kind of roll out as time goes on. Those are typically available about a year to 11 months before your travel date, just because it allows DVC members to get their bookings in before they open up the bookings to regular guests. So just very basic, starting at the very beginning, a vacation package consists of a resort hotel reservation and your park tickets. These need to be booked together to get that vacation package perk, and it really is just the best way to book your Walt Disney World vacation. When you book this way, all it takes is a $200 deposit. So you could book a vacation right now for 2025, looking ahead. For only $200, lock in your rates, and then if any special um, discounts come up, I can always apply those to your vacation, saving you money. I have actually done this multiple times. I had a client who paid off their vacation, then a discount came out, and they were actually refunded money from Disney, which is always fun. So don't worry about missing on those missing out on those discounts. When you book early, you're still able to get them if it applies to your trip. Another funny thing is a lot of times when you book so far in advance, when they release those discounts, sometimes you already have the better deal. The lowest typically the lowest price that Disney is going to offer is when they first release those vacations. Now they will come up with discounts sometimes if they need to fill more rooms. And then again, we can apply that to your vacation. No worries. This $200 deposit is also fully refundable up to 30 days before your trip. So your final payment, all due in full, is due 30 days before your check-in date. Anytime before that, you can change your dates um, without a penalty. Now the price might change depending on your dates, but there is no penalty to change your dates. Or you can cancel your trip and get your $200 back. No questions asked. It just returns to your original payment form. It's easy. Also, any payments you've made on your vacation up before that 30 days will also be refunded. Speaking of payments, this is where I think this is such a great deal for the consumer when it comes to booking your trip early. So again, typically Disney is not releasing these packages to be booked until 
late May, beginning of June. So that really cuts down your time. If you're planning on traveling in January, you don't have that long of a you know, period to get to make payments on your trip. Now, if you book, you know, in the next couple of weeks and you're traveling in January, you have a good 10, nine to 10 months to make payments on your trip. These are interest-free payments you make on your own schedule. I have clients who make weekly payments. I have clients who make monthly payments. I have clients who just randomly will text me and say, I need to make a payment and we get that payment made. It's going to allow you to have longer to pay on your trip. Now, if you book in the next couple of weeks and you're not going to travel until next October, you have a very long time, over a year, over a year and a half to make payments on your trip. What does this mean? This means if you have always dreamed of staying at a deluxe resort, that top tier resort that Disney offers, but it's never been in your price point, it's always been out of budget, by booking this far in advance, that deluxe resort might be in your budget because you will have longer to pay on your trip. Your payments will be smaller because you have longer to pay on your trip. These are just things to think about. I would say right now, the majority of my clients that stay at the deluxe level resorts, they are booking really far in advance and paying longer on their trips. They're not these people who just have unlimited budgets, which that would be really nice, wouldn't it? They are maximizing offers like this where you can book so far in advance and make that deluxe dream happen. By staying at a deluxe resort, you also get other perks that you won't get when you stay at a value or a moderate. And one of those is extended evening hours at Epcot and Magic Kingdom as of right now. So Monday nights at Epcot are open to, after the park closes, open to only deluxe resort guests for extra hours. These are so nice. I Love taking advantage of them. Uh, It's one of the reasons I like to stay deluxe is to just have this extra time in the parks. And on Wednesday nights, this is over at Magic Kingdom. They have changed. uh, They had them at Animal Kingdom for a little bit. And I think Hollywood Studios for a little bit during the holidays and stuff. So it is, you know, typical to change. But as of right now, extended evening hours are set for Mondays and Wednesday nights at Epcot and Magic Kingdom. And this is just an extra perk you get for staying at a deluxe resort. Okay, so let's just talk other perks for staying at Disney resorts in general. At any of the three level resorts, you will get extra time in the parks in the mornings. You will have 30 minutes that they're gonna allow you to enter into each park. And so that's just kind of a little small perk above other guests is having that option to get into the park 30 minutes early. And this is really important in my opinion for busy seasons because it will just allow you to maybe get in line for a more popular ride before the general public, or it allows you to get maybe a couple of small rides done before everyone comes into the park. One of uh, another great perk that I personally love is the complimentary transportation to all the parks from the Disney resorts. This is so important. I mean, there's nothing better than just really being in that Disney bubble, getting on Disney property and not have to worry about parking, driving, any of that, because that is going to be taken care of for you by staying at one of these resorts. There are many different kinds of transportation, just depends on which resort you are staying at to be, you know, allowed which one you will have offered. There is the bus, which is the main one. Every single resort has bus transportation to the parks. There is the monorail, which if you have to stay on a, at a monorail loop resort, which is contemporary Polynesian and Grand Floridian, and this is closer to Magic Kingdom. The monorail will also take you to Epcot, so you'll have to take the monorail from your resort to the Ticket and Transportation Center, hop on it, you know, switch monorails there, and get to Epcot, which this is also a really fun way to, it's just a fun transportation option in general. It's kind of like its own little ride. Another one is the Skyliner. This is probably my favorite one, my kids' favorite one. They love it. Um, the Skyliner you can access from Riviera Resort, Caribbean Beach Resort, Pop Century, and Art of Animation. So if you're familiar with Disney Resorts, that's one value, one moderate, and t- or, sorry, 
one deluxe, one moderate, and two value resorts right there that you get this special access to take the Skyliner to Hollywood Studios or Epcot. You can also use a Skyliner from Beach Club, Yacht Club, and Boardwalk to get over to um, Hollywood Studios. And finally, there is boat transportation. Um, Boat transportation can take you to either Epcot or Hollywood Studios from Beach, Yacht, Swan and Dolphin, or Boardwalk. Or boat transportation can take you over to Disney Springs from Saratoga Springs Resort, Old Key West Resort, and both of the Port Orleans Resorts. So these are just great ways that you can really live in that Disney bubble. Just kind of let the real world disappear. No traffic, no parking, anything. Just hop on that Disney transportation and you are taken care of. And the best part, it's very reliable. You're not going to get left at the park. The buses and all the other transportation, they run from certain times before the park opens up to, I think, two hours after the park closes. Another perk is just that proximity, being in that Disney bubble. When you are staying at a Disney resort, you really are not in the real world. You Most of the time when I am there and when I have clients there, what they tell me is they don't even, they just kind of forget about the real world because you are just surrounded by Disney all the time. The cast members who work at the resorts are just one of a kind. They're amazing. They go above and beyond what a regular hotel employee would go for you. And it's just fun and it's just such a great feeling. And with the three different levels of resorts, there really is a price point for everyone. So if you're thinking, oh, I can't afford a Disney to stay at a Disney hotel, you probably can. You just need to reach out and let me know. Let's work with that budget because a lot of the time those value resorts are actually at a lower price point than some of the off-site options. Another perk is having that option to book that vacation package and just pay with a $200 deposit. If you are staying off-site, there are some off-site resorts that Disney will allow to kind of be in their vacation package, and you will have that option to just do the $200 deposit. But if you're, let's say, using points or you're just staying at a different, um, an Airbnb or something, you're going to have to pay for that. And then you're going to have to buy your tickets and you have to pay in full when you purchase those tickets. A lot of times people don't realize that their tickets can be the most expensive part of their trip. So when they are like, oh, I already have an Airbnb booked. What is the cost of my tickets? And I come back and I tell them it's like two, $3,000. They're really surprised. Like what? That's how much my tickets are? And so by staying on site, you can just bundle all that in together. You can also, another perk is being able to add the Disney dining plan or the Disney quick service dining plan to your package. And this will just allow you to have a more all-inclusive feel by prepaying for some of your meals. Again, if you are not staying at a Disney resort, you cannot add the dining package to your vacation package. Another great perk that um, all of my clients take advantage of is early access to your dining reservation. So Disney hotel guests will get to make their dining reservations for their entire stay up to 10 nights, 60 days before the first day of their vacation. So 60 days before your check-in, I can go ahead and go in and start making those dining reservations for you. When I have clients who are staying off-site, they have to make those reservations each day of that they want that 60 days out. Okay, so I know that sounds confusing. So let's say you're checking in on a Monday. 60 days before that, you can make Monday's reservations. Then your next day, Tuesday, you have to wait 60 days before that to make that reservation. And so by that time, a lot of those top restaurants, you know, maybe the one you just had to eat at, it's already going to be booked because those Disney on-site guests have already had an opportunity to go in and book all of their reservations for their trip. This People think, oh, that's not a big deal, but it actually is a big deal. I had a client who really wanted to eat at Cinderella's Royal Table. This is a very hard reservation to get. They were staying off site, so I prepared them that they might not get it, and they didn't. We could not get it for them. Even leading up to their trip, it was just not something that ever became available. So if you are wanting to eat at some of these, you know, more popular restaurants, 
just really think about staying on site. It will just make your trip easier. It'll make the whole planning process more seamless. And overall, I, in my opinion, it will be a better experience for you. Now here is some exciting news. Those are all really great perks for staying on site at Disney. In my opinion, I think just those alone would have me convinced. However, Disney for 2025 is giving you one more reason why they want you to stay on site. And that is having access, free access to one of their water parks on your check-in date. So Disney has two water parks, Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach, and they are open at separate times. So Blizzard Beach is typically open in the winter slash early spring, whereas Typhoon Lagoon is open in the summer and into the fall. So on your check-in date, you can visit whichever water park is open for free. Now, if you've been here a while, you will know that me and my son on our last trip in June last summer, we visited Typhoon Lagoon. I did have some strong opinions about Typhoon Lagoon. It was fun. It wasn't my favorite. But if I had the option to visit for free because I'm already going to be staying on site, that to me completely changes the value of these water parks. It makes it so worth it. There's nothing better, in my opinion, on your arrival day. Let's say you have an early flight, but you didn't really want to do a park day. But if you just stay at the resort, your kids, like you don't know if it'll be as fun. Now you can just hop over to a water park, spend a few hours there. You don't have to feel guilty about not taking advantage of everything at the water park because you didn't buy a ticket. And it's just going to add an extra little value to your trip. Also, if it's raining on your arrival day and you decide I'm not going to go to the water park, that's fine because you didn't pay again, you didn't pay for it. So it's not like you're losing anything. You still could visit uh, the water park, even if it's raining and just maybe go have some of the snacks, try some of the food, wait for it to kind of stop raining and participate in all the water activities. But overall, this is just such a fun value, and it's going to give you that opportunity to experience something new at Disney, especially if you've been to Disney multiple times. You know, there's always things to do at Disney. I truly believe you can never go too many times, but let's say you've been a lot, but you've never been to a water park. Here is your chance. Book that vacation, stay in any of the resorts at Disney, and get to go to that water park on your check-in day for free. One of the great things about the water parks is there is really something for every age. So you're going to have your thrill slides. There's going to be a lazy river. There's usually like a big wave pool. Then they're going to have little splash areas for kids and pools for little kids. So this is a park definitely designed for all ages. Everyone will be able to find something that they can enjoy there. And since you're not buying a ticket to the park, maybe take that money you would have spent on a ticket and rent a cabana. This would be a great location for your family to just be able to sit, chill, and relax, especially on that arrival day when you're probably going to be tired. Get that cabana, visit that water park, and just take advantage of this extra little perk that Disney is giving you in 2025. Because if we're being honest, we don't know if it's going to be around for 2026. Okay, I think I covered pretty much all of the basics. If you have any questions, if you are wanting to book, if you're thinking you might want to book for 2025, go ahead and reach out to me. My email is jenny at trolleylanetravel.com or you can go to the show notes. I have a link to my quote form. Fill it out. I will get in touch with you. I will get back to you within 48 hours with a quote. And yeah, if you don't want to go, that's fine. No harm, no foul. But if you're looking at these numbers and you're thinking, yeah, I think I do want to go. And yeah, I think I want to book early. Let's do it right now. That's a wrap on today's show. As always, thanks for listening. Make sure to visit us on Instagram at Disney Travel Tales. If you're wanting to support the show, the best and easiest way to do that is to leave a five-star positive review on Apple Podcasts. It's so easy and means the world to me. 
can't wait to be back next week with you. So until then, this is Jenny, and may all your Disney travel dreams come true. This is Jenny, just popping on with some exciting news. I've started a Facebook group just for you. I'm really excited about this because not only will this be a great opportunity to get to know each other, but this is also a safe space to talk all things Disney. Members can share travel tips, resort tips, likes and dislikes, and the best part is this will give you an opportunity to talk to the guest on the show and ask them questions about their trips. I was trying to think of a fun name for us, and Disney Travel Tales Podcast Clubhouse came to mind. This is a private group, and of course, I will not allow anyone to be bullied or talked down to. I just want this space to be positive and fun. Check the show notes for a link to join, or just search Disney Travel Tales Podcast Clubhouse in Facebook. I can't wait to see you over there.